Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the differences between docked and handheld mode for the Nintendo Switch in Super Mario Odyssey using Yuzu, a Switch emulator. Previously, Super Mario Odyssey would only load in Yuzu when set to docked mode, but Yuzu has now enabled us to boot Odyssey in portable mode by simply unticking the docked mode option. The difference between handheld and docked relate to output resolution and GPU frequency. In Super Mario Odyssey, Docked offers an upscaled resolution of 1080 from what is a dynamic res of 900p with a focus on delivering a constant 60fps gameplay experience. Depending on load, it will scale down to 810 and 720p respectively. In handheld mode, Super Mario Odyssey runs at a resolution of 640x720 using a frame interpolation technique once again with the focus being on presenting a constant 60 fps. So that's the reality on original Switch hardware, but of course we're looking at emulation on a PC. Currently Yuzu is very early in development and obviously not on par with the Switch in terms of graphics and performance in Super Mario Odyssey yet. Pair that with the fact that portable mode is newly working and will no doubt receive many future optimizations. With that said, it's still interesting to explore the progressive steps Yuzu will continue to go through as it has demonstrated thus far. Each test is a mark in development history to see where we are and where we reached. In the world of emulation, the focus for developers is always accuracy, providing as close to the original hardware experience as possible. However, if 100% accuracy were the literal goal, it would actually be limiting the potential of an emulator and the PC platform. We want to reach higher resolutions and frame rate, as well as to take the experience of playing Super Mario Odyssey and other titles to new heights with new capabilities. With portable mode, we can speculate what it may bring to the table if it were to be optimised and accurately emulated. We already know that handheld mode is delivered with less graphical power and resolution, so theoretically it has the potential to open up more doors to lesser powerful systems. Let's see how it performs in comparison to dock mode in Yuzu Canary Build 1023. For system analysis on screen display, I'll be using MSI Afterburner paired with RiverTuner Statistics Server displaying CPU, GPU, FPS, memory and per core utilisation. As noted by Digital Foundry's Richard Ledbetter on a Eurogamer article, docked mode can see GPU clocks generally rise by a factor of 2.5 compared to handheld. If you'd like to dive into the nitty gritty of Switch specs, I've linked the article below. Jumping right into it, whenever I do these tests I make sure that the emulator is the only application running after a fresh boot. Both emulator and game are being run on a Samsung 850 EVO SSD. In terms of system specs, you'll find them in the description. With the on-screen display statistics, remember that the system RAM in use shown is lower than the total committed memory by around 2.5GB. And, and I'm not using a page file. Yuzu settings are all left on default. Captured numbers are best done under exactly the same scenario, which can be tricky in actual gameplay, but much easier in menus and static moments. The presentation is easily understood with portable performance on the left and docked on the right, both synced at the same starting points. The idea and expectation is simple. Will we get better performance in portable mode? Let's find out. Starting with the menu, it looks as though portable mode initially is quicker showing Mario's cap but docked provides the menu first. Frame rate wise, both modes offer similar values of 56 FPS. Any statistical system differences here are all minor and within the margin of error. Save loading times into the Cloud Kingdom are nearly identical. In this loading instance, I would ignore RAM usage as you'll see the parity in the following gameplay clip. The advantage of portable mode is immediately apparent as it reaches a higher frame rate quicker than docked and maintains that number in turn providing smoother gameplay readiness quicker with up to a 10 fps difference next to the odyssey itself. During gameplay system utilization is very similar however the GPU is in higher demand in this instance by 10% when docked due to outputting a higher resolution. In terms of real world current performance both modes do surprisingly well with portable mode having a clear edge with the hands-on experience reaching a higher FPS in a smoother way. Docked mode feels a little more laboured here but still very playable but of course this is the best case scenario using the easiest to run Cloud Kingdom which has the least to render of most kingdoms. When looking back at the Odyssey both modes provide similar FPS and overall system utilisation. Undocked takes it for me with the extra performance it's capable of. 
In the following comparison, where transporting between kingdoms using the Odyssey, handheld is the clear winner, outputting considerably more frames than docked, peaking at 30 against the best effort of docked being 21 frames per second. Docked is also using consistently slightly more GPU VRAM. In the final scene, we're going to be depositing moons into the Odyssey on the Metro Kingdom. Interestingly, and for reasons unknown, in this situation, portable mode performed worse than docked. In conclusion, what do these examples show us? Well, given the right conditions, portable mode can already definitely outperform docked within Yuzu, a Switch emulator in its current state. To be showing these numbers this early is an extremely promising sign of things to come. Let me wrap this up with a few key points. Emulators in general are driven by CPU performance first and foremost. Yuzu is no different. The results shown here reflect my personal experience. Yours will almost certainly differ based on hardware. Currently, Yuzu is focused on single core performance, which is why although we aren't seeing 100% CPU usage, community experiences are varied. Down the road when Yuzu implements multi-core support, performance should drastically increase. As always, when it comes to using Yuzu, I recommend the Canary builds first. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this. Make sure to stick around to follow the progression of Yuzu, the original Switch emulator. Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. Complaining Gamer social media links are also there. If you dislike the content, dislike. If you liked it, leave a like. And to stay up to date with all things emulation, subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'll catch you in the next one.